Hey guys, Alpha Seal here. Today I'm doing a new series where I do uh, extensive combat guides for every type of enemy in Grounded. Or at least en every enemy you have to worry about, you know. And I'm going to start it off with a very common enemy that everyone has problems with, which is wolf spiders. I feel like that's a really important one to have a tutorial for. So I do want to start off by saying that I don't do cheese strats. Like, I don't make tutorials for cheese strats. If you're looking for a way to fight a wolf spider without actually fighting it, this is not the tutorial for you. Now that being said, this guide is going to tell you the best strategy of going about fighting a wolf spider as well as what kind of gear you need. Now I'm going to cover three different points of progress uh, that you should be at if you want to fight wolf spiders. That way, no matter where you are in the game, I'll give you the best strategy for your point in the game. So if you're really early game, uh, that's what this top row is for. You want to have uh, either a pebblet axe, a larva blade, or a red ant club. Now the pebblet axe and the larva blade are actually damage types that the wolf spider is weak to. It's weak to chopping damage and slashing damage. And as you can see here, you got you get the little chopping damage, and uh, larva blade is apparently also chopping damage. I didn't know this. I, I figured it was slashing damage. And then the red ant club, it's only here because it has a lot of damage. Granted, this is an upgraded version, but still, you know, the actual damage would be right here, and that's still a lot of damage. And then the armor you want is going to be the acorn set, though honestly, if you don't have the mithridatism mutation already, the armor probably isn't going to matter. Now the reason why the armor doesn't matter is because every time a wolf spider hits you, he does a poison effect, and that poison effect is going to take most of your health regardless, and depending on how much he did when he hits you, you're probably already dead. That's why it's best to also include some healing items, such as uh, fiber bandages or uh, some sort of smoothie. It doesn't actually matter what kind of smoothie, because they all heal the same amount except for the beefy ones, which heal more. But if you don't have access to beefy smoothies, don't worry about it. You can use regular ones. As far as what smoothies to make, uh, you could either use the actual recipes that you have or uh, something that a lot of people don't talk about, they don't have uh, tutorials for, is that you can actually use whatever ingredient you want. See, if you, uh, let's say I have some extra antlion parts, let's say uh, I wanna make a beefy smoothie, uh, it, but it works with all smoothies, of course, and I can just throw three antlion parts into there, and then I can, well, assuming it lets me craft, oh, there we go, I can craft a smoothie. Uh, just like that and it doesn't actually matter what the ingredients are if they're not one of the ones in the recipe here It's just gonna be a smoothie question mark and That smoothie question mark is still going to heal you. It's just not gonna have any extra effects Anyways, yeah, so my recommendation is to have at least antlion armor though The armor doesn't matter all that much one of these three weapons and then some healing items in case you get hit But what I really recommend at this stage is is either to avoid wolf spiders in general or just practice with one weapon and no armor, no heals because odds are you're going to be dying a lot regardless of what you're using. Now for mid game, odds are you have access to better armor and better weapons. So you probably have the ladybug armor and that's generally the best to use in this situation. And then you probably want to either use the mosquito needle, the spider fang dagger, or the black ant sword if you're lucky enough to have it. Now, you can technically consider the black ant sword as a bit more of a late game weapon, so you don't necessarily need this, but one of these two should do just fine. Now, the mosquito needle doesn't actually do that much damage to it, but the reason why it's a good weapon in this situation is because it has life seal. So that just in case you get hit once, get poisoned, take a bunch of poison damage, you can still heal enough to live the poison. And as for the spider fang dagger, I don't blame you if you don't have this one either since you need to defeat a wolf spider in order to have this. Now for late game stuff, you probably want an antlion sword of some kind. The best two are going to be the level 7 mighty and the level 7 spicy. Now that being said, it doesn't matter which one you use, they do the same damage. They're going to kill it in about 4 hits. Now that being said, there's a couple of ways to maximize your damage output. If you have an antlion sword, you're probably going to have an easy time with wolf spiders no matter what, but the best two armor to use against this guy are going to be the koi scale armor and the spider armor. Now the reason for each one is because odds are you're going to need to parry at least one hit from the wolf spider, 
and the Koi armor is going to help you deal more damage to him. I think so you can three hit him. I, I'm not 100% sure, but you might be able to three hit him uh, if you have the Koi scale armor. And then for the spider hood, this is just so that the antlion sword doesn't take up all your stamina when you do the first three hits. That way you can get a fourth hit if you're lucky before the wolf spider actually tries to attack you. That being said, if you follow this tutorial enough and you learn how the parry system works, you won't need most of this. All you'll really need is some sort of weapon, like a pablet axe or a larva blade. Either one's gonna work, and better weapons just means you kill it faster. Now, as for what mutations that you need, there's only four that actually make a real difference. Now first there's Parry Master, which recovers your stamina every time you do a parry, and this is going to be important because you're going to be parrying a lot. Next you have Coupe de Grass, which is a bit of a late game mutation, but if you have it, it helps. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Then you have Buff Lungs. This again helps to get the fourth hit of the Antlion Sword, but otherwise it's not really that useful. And then lastly, and most importantly, is Mithridatism. This gives you complete immunity to poison and it is by far the best mutation for fighting wolf spiders since that's where most of their damage comes from. The only catch is you actually have to defeat 5 wolf spiders already before you can unlock this mutation. Now after you already have Mithridicism, Meat Shield helps, it, it just, it, it does. Now before we move on, I'm going to find a wolf spider and challenge him with no mutations as well as the minimum gear possible which is going to be the acorn set with the pebblet axe. Right, so I see a wolf spider right there uh, over those leaves, and I'm gonna go fight him real quick, and then I'm gonna talk about his moves afterward. Oh no, he's stuck. Okay, so sometimes their AI gets stuck. Uh, this is a thing that happens. Uh, I'm gonna try to reset his AI. Now, if this happens with you, you're lucky and you get a free kill. But um, since I'm making a tutorial of this, I actually don't want this to happen. So I kind of want to... I want to see if I can make his AI start up again by leaving him alone. Okay, so it does look like he's moving again. I'm gonna see if I can... Um, Let's see if I can make him climb down here. Can can you can you climb? Please do something. Okay. I think if I trick him enough, yeah, there we go. Okay. So I just gotta stay close to him. Come on, come down here, buddy. Climb down. You can do it. Do you do it? I don't know if he did it. Well, there's another one. Okay. Don't worry, guys. This tutorial isn't scuffed. Alright. Fight me. Wow, okay. I don't know what's going on with your AI, but you're not having fun. Alright, so I guess while I'm here, I'm going to talk about his moves a little bit. So, he has... Uh, I can't... Dude, are you okay? Oh, oh, he's on the ground now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. So he has uh, a number of moves, which uh, I think I'm just going to keep pairing them and then talk about them. So he has a jump attack, which is that attack right there. He has a roaring attack, where he roars and then does like an overhead swing, which you just saw. He has this five hit combo. Now hit number three typically uh, misses, but you want to perfect block it anyway, just in case. Uh, yeah, so he has this jumping attack, he has... The 5 hit combo, which is basically 4 hits and then like 
a slightly delayed fifth hit, right? And then he has two attacks for each side. I mean, uh, he has one attack for each side, so he has like a left attack and a right attack. And then, so once you learn all five of those attacks, uh, that's pretty much it. You, you kind of just... All you do is block as soon as they hit you. They're very telegraphed if, if, if you're paying attention. Oh, well, I just got hit. Now, as you can see, it didn't actually do much, but look at how much it does after the poison takes effect. Look, I'm already at half health. He only hit me once, but I'm almost dead already. Wow, I barely survived that. If he hit me with like a stronger hit, I probably would have been dead after that. And I am I am wearing full acorn armor, so it's like it's not exactly bad armor. But yeah, so all you do is just parry him and then get in your hits when you can. And then once you're familiar with it, enough with this, you should be able to take him on no matter what you have on. Now I'm, I have a little bit of experience with this, uh, because I literally made this a speedrun. Uh, if you check my channel, I have two speedruns up where I fight the wolf spider as quickly as possible. So basically, right from starting a brand new game, within four minutes I kill a wolf spider. And that's just the speedrun. <laughs> that's the entire speedrun. So, I think I'm gonna kill him. Okay. And you know, eventually his health's gonna go down, and then boom, he's dead, right? And then, um, there's another wolf spider over there, so I'm gonna take this opportunity. I hope he doesn't notice me until after I change my stuff. Anyway, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to show a mid-game armor. Why am I, why am I, what hit me? I, I was suddenly at worse health, I don't know, either way. So I'm gonna full heal real quick, and then um, so I have the ladybug armor now on now, and then let's put on the mosquito needle. Uh, this is unupgraded, but ideally, no matter what the situation is, you want to have as much upgrades as you can. Uh, I'm gonna eat this real quick since I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. Surprisingly not terrible. Uh, get him out of the way. All right, so now I'm gonna fight this second wolf spider. Hopefully, he's not super bugged. Like I can see, he's glitching into the into the wall a little bit there. Do like a jump attack to get out of there, please. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of situations where you get lucky with this. Oh wow, he can't even use a jump attack to get out. Come on. There you go. Okay. Jump at me. Okay, come at me. Come on. You got it. Come down here. It ain't that hard. Okay, well, I hope I can fight him up here. Yeah, so I can just use the mosquito needle. Just stab him a few times. Now, the cool thing about the mosquito needle is that uh, you have a little bit more range. So you don't actually have to get into his face in order to land hits on him. You can just be at a reasonable distance from them, and then you can still land the hits. And then you just want to keep stabbing them forever. Now this is obviously a bad example of a real fight, because you're much more likely to be on like a flat ground, and you know, that kind of situation. But, you know. No fight's gonna be ideal. <laughs> Yeah, so again, it there's not really much of a trick for fighting wolf spiders, at least early on. You just have to know their moveset and parry accordingly. And you'd be surprised how many how many different enemies have a solutions like these. It was really just about knowing their moveset, you know? Some of the toughest enemies in the game are actually really simple if you just learn how to parry. You'd be surprised how simple a lot of these enemies are. Now, obviously, 
they did a number on my durability. I'm gonna see if I can reload the save so I can show you. Uh... No, that's an auto save. Uh, oh, there it is, okay. Now you've seen the strategy mostly be the same no matter what you're using as far as the mid game and, and uh, early game armor. But now I wanna show you what a end game setup looks like. So I'm gonna put on the Koi scale armor. I'm gonna put on buff lungs, parry master, blade master, Mithridatism, uh, Coupe de Grass. You might not have all these uh, mutations. You might not have 5-5, five, five, but I'm saying this is a perfect situation, right? Because anything outside of a perfect situation will look somewhat like the, the two matches that I've already had, right? So I'm just gonna kill him real quick. Now, uh, that one hit actually knocked him off. Um, so I wanna actually bring him back. Yeah. And just like that, he's dead. And just with like a crit, like if you get a crit from Coop to Grass, you're kind of set, right? And just like that, he's dead. Simple as that. Four hits, they're probably dead. Sometimes five. Uh, I guess it just depends on what armor you're using. Like if you, uh, with a Koi scale, that's four, but it might have been five with a uh, with like spider armor or something. Either way, you can see how fast it is. If you know what you're doing the most, you'll have to parry as like one or two hits, and then they'll be dead because you have really strong, really strong items. So you know that that's pretty much it. So early game really hard, but still not impossible. Uh, if you have a pebblet axe, you can in fact beat a wolf spider with just the pebblet axe as long as you're good enough at parrying. And that works on both woe mode and normal mode. On normal mode, you can actually beat a wolf spider with nothing but a rotten larva blade, which is in my speedrun. Now that being said, that only works on normal mode because otherwise the rotten larva blade doesn't have enough durability for woe mode, but still, it's still pretty fun if you can do that and impress all your friends. Just, you know, basically join a new server and just be like, hey, I'm gonna go fight a wolf spider real quick. And there's like, what? And then you just completely destroy a wolf spider before they even do anything else. And then they're just like, how did you do that? And I'm just like, well, I had a pebble axe. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with this. All you have to do is learn parrying. Uh, parrying is by far your most useful skill in the entire game. I'm gonna say it till the day I die. No matter what enemy you're dealing with, parrying is the best thing to do. Now there are a few enemies with attacks that you can't parry, such as uh, Stink Bugs and Broodmother has like a roaring attack, but generally speaking, every enemy that you can fight is parryable. Every attack that they can throw at you is parryable. So as long as you're good enough at parrying, you're going to defeat every enemy in the game and it's not even going to be close. If you want real practice with parrying, far beyond what the game can give you, I recommend trying out Sekiro. Now, Sekiro is a Souls-like uh, sort of samurai game that From Software made. You know, this is the same people that made Dark Souls, and it actually has a combat system very similar to Grounded. Basically, you can block, and if you block at the perfect time, you get what's called a deflect. Now, in this game they call it a parry or a perfect block, but in Sekiro they call it a deflect. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. Either way, it it's just a better version of a block. Now in this game, you get a lot of benefits if you land it. You know, you, you recover stamina if you have the mutation, you take no damage, you take no stamina damage. It's just a really good thing if you land it. In Sekiro, that's the prerequisite. You gotta be landing those 24-7 if you plan on defeating anything difficult in that game. Wolf spiders are training wheels compared to some of the first bosses you fight in Sekiro. So if you really want practice, play Sekiro. Other than that, just learn the moveset. And if you're having trouble reading what the wolf spider's moves are, just pay attention to where his head goes. If his head leans toward the right, he's about to do the right swing attack. If his head leans toward the left, he's about to do the left swing attack. If his head stays in place but he does that roar, then he's about to do the overhead attack. If he starts jumping, then boom, he's about to do the jump attack, obviously. And if his head moves a little bit to the right, but not like all the way to the right, then that means he's about to do that five hit combo. 
which in my opinion is the hardest thing to parry of his, but it's just as easy to learn if you give it the time. Anyways, that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Um, I promise that later on, some of the enemies will actually have realistic strategies that work really well and that make them much easier to fight. For the wolf spider alone, it's really just parry and hope you're better at parrying than he is at attacking you. That's really all it is. I think next I'm going to do antlions and they actually do have a strategy that helps a lot that is more than just, well, just parry everything. You know, they, there's actual strategies for a lot of these enemies. Wolf spider just isn't one of them. But anyway, um, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Make sure to follow my Twitch at Beta Seagull. Uh, I plan on doing more grounded streams. I'm going to be doing more speed runs of different categories in grounded. Uh, I plan on doing a subathon in February when Elden Ring comes out. And then, of course, I'm going to be playing uh, the new Pokemon game when it comes out on January 28th. So, you know, I have a lot of big things planned. Just make sure to hit all those buttons and uh, make sure to see it happen. I'll see you guys later.